Hi everyone, I wanted to go through some of the Lightweave 11.5 workflow enhancements uh, that you might actually miss at first glance. Now, while this video is going to be useful for anybody using Lightwave for the first time, I think it will be more so for veteran users who are accustomed to Lightwave working in a specific way. And so hopefully this will highlight some of those areas that have been improved that will really help you with your workflow. So let's get started and start going through some of these. 11.5 now makes it much easier to work with motion paths. So if I just bring in these uh, planes, and you can see we've got the fixed value motion pass, which is 60 frames either side. Uh, what we can do now is if I hit the D key for the display options and just go to the GL tab, uh, we can now control how many frames leading up to the current keyframe and going away from the current keyframe. So if I start to slide this, you can see how I can reduce or extend the number of frames leading up uh, as well as going out. Uh, which gives, gives more control if you don't want to see everything or, or you want to extend it beyond what we could do before. Uh, you can also use the item color. So if I to switch that off, this is what motion paths used to look like, but now you can click this on uh, to give each item uh, a different color, which makes it much easier to see uh, which motion path belongs to which item. And where you would change that is if I go to the scene editor, and if I right click on any of these, <coughs> I can go and choose any of these colors. Uh, so if I make this one white, and you can see that this selected item here, if I just extend it out, has now changed to that colour. And if I just go and select all the other ones, it just makes it easy now to see which one belongs to which one. Uh, you can also now control whether you show the frame markers, which are these little dots that indicate each frame. Uh, you can also show and hide keyframes, which we could do before, but we just have more options now. So hopefully that makes it a lot easier to just work with the animations in general. A simple but powerful addition to the surface editor in 11.5 is now the ability to copy and paste individual parameters from these various tabs. So I've got a bunch of objects here and you can see that the ground plane is the only object that has reflections and blurry reflections. So the blurry reflections are coming from the environment tab and the reflection blurring setting here whereas the reflection is being driven by a simple Fresnel node. So if I wanted to copy and paste those two parameters to these other objects, now if I was to copy and paste, it's clearly going to pick up the surface color and overwrite all the other objects' colors. Uh, so I don't want to do that. So what I can do now is copy the surface, and if I right-click and say expand all surfaces here, I can select all the other objects and I can paste only the nodes. So now all the other objects you can see have the uh, Fresnel node driving the reflection, but it doesn't have the blurry reflections. So I can now right click on here and say paste environment tab. And that will now have uh, the blurry reflection setting across all of them as well. So that makes it a lot easier and quicker to manipulate your surfaces uh, with these different individual parameters. A simple feature request that I know many of our customers will appreciate is the ability to now fit all and fit selected in the perspective view. Now you could always do this in the elevational views, so if I was to select an item and hit shift A it will zoom in on that item, or if I was to hit just the A key it will fit all. Now you can do this in the perspective view, which means you can work in the perspective view and navigate around your scene much more easily. If you've ever been working in layout and you've always wanted the handles uh, for the gizmos to be a little bit more visible, and there's now an option in the display tab, so if you hit D for the display options and then come down to the handles and icons tab, you'll see there's a check mark here now for thicker gizmo handles. And if I check that on, you can see that it toggles on thicker drawing of various gizmos. If you've ever been working in a scene that's got a lot of items in it uh, that may be parented or targeted to other items in the scene and you're in the motion options panel here and let's say I want to dereference this uh, item here for the target item now previously you would have to click uh, on this pop-up menu and then scroll up a potentially very long list of items just to get to the top to select none uh, whereas now you can just click this little X button here and it will dereference that item uh, and this is available for anything in the motion options panel where you reference other items in the scene. If you've ever needed to animate an item not only by its path but actually by uh, its velocity or speed, 
uh, but the keyframes that you were editing were not around the zero axis. You can see here that these keyframes are all up about 140 meters. Uh, it meant that it was actually really difficult to edit the speed and velocity curves by editing these uh, keys uh, and actually see it uh, while zoomed in on the keys that you're editing. So now a really useful but simple option is the center speed curves option. And what that will do is, if I sort of just move around, you can see that it will always draw the speed and velocity curves in the center of the, the window here. So I can start to edit the, these uh, curves based on the keyframe that I'm actually manipulating here. Uh, but it actually works around uh, where you're working and not limited to just around the zero axis. One much requested feature now available in 11.5 is the ability to multi-select edit, light, exclusion and object lists. Uh, in this example I've got a single object lit with many lights and if I bring up the properties and go to the lights tab for the object, uh, what I can do now is I can hold down shift to select a range, hold down control to start a new selection branch and hold down shift to continue on with my ranged selection. So I can define very exclusive uh, selection uh, sets here and then I can click with a single click into the exclude column and that will exclude or if I click again uh, unexclude the lights from hitting that object. Uh, this is also available in the um, lights properties and objects tab uh, if I had a scene with obviously multiple objects makes it a lot easier to work with uh, exclusion lists now in 11.5. The node editor in Lightwave 11.5 sees a number of useful additions. Uh, one of them is the ability to now draw uh, node connections in a third type which is spline. So if you were never a fan of the straight connection because it kind of looked a bit messy so you preferred the square type but as you can see here it's difficult to see where the connections are, have been routed. So now what you can do is hit the uh, spline option and it now looks a little bit better and it's much easier to see uh, where the connections are going. Uh, another really useful feature is the probe uh, icon up here which allows you to hover over the output of a node and see what its value is uh, without having to uh, uh, do test renders to see what's going on. Uh, a really small feature but actually really useful is the ability to now type and have the list automatically update without having to hit return every time. Uh, really small feature but actually is very useful. Uh, so that's uh, working in the node editor in Lightwave 11.5. There are many applications where this next feature enhancement can really speed up your workflow uh, but here's a really good example. So I've got this award logo here and I want to use the Image World plugin with a HDR cloud kind of texture uh, to illuminate the, uh, the scene essentially. Uh, it gives some nice subtle lighting in there than if I was just using regular lights. Um, so I'm really happy with that, I like the way it looks. Uh, the problem is I don't want to see the background that I'm using to illuminate the scene. So previously what you'd have to do is go to the compositing tab and under background image you would pull down on a pre-made background color that you wanted to use, in this case white, um, so I could then use uh, just the image on its own. Uh, whereas now if you don't need to do that, you can just say use background color and then just go and pick whichever color suits you and it's as simple as that, no more having to create uh, plate uh, colors. So that's an overview of some of the highlights of the 11.5 workflow enhancements. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and that these features really help you in your everyday work. Uh, thank you for watching.